Cool. Well, hello everyone, my name is Kevin and I'd like to welcome you all to our latest Novage webinar series episode. Uh, today we are partnering with Brian Mobach to talk about jewelry rendering in real time with BunkSpeed Pro Suite. Uh, see how BunkSpeed Pro Suite can be your gateway for transforming 3D models into breathtaking renders. Uh, jewelry designers will love the ability to take minutes, not hours, to render photorealistic images. Create stunning results with a small number of intuitive settings and light scenes using HDR images with a virtual photo studio. Uh, because BunkSpeed Pro Suite works hand in hand with your computer's GPU, uh, you'll make revisions with minimal workflow disruptions. Uh, whether it's for design or live reviews, there is no tool out there that's simpler and faster than BunkSpeed. And for those of you who don't know who our presenter is, uh, Brian Mobach is a lead support and application engineer at BunkSpeed. Uh, having worked with the company for over four years, Brian is well versed in 3D applications ranging from Maya, SolidWorks, and BunkSpeed. Uh, he has provided 3D visualizations for Black & Decker, Porter Cable, Craftsman, Bresta Group, and Honda. Uh, working behind the scenes with us, we have Angela Smith on board to answer any and all Bunk Speed questions as well. So our presentation is about 40 minutes long, and afterwards we'll have a brief Q&A session where Brian will answer your questions live. Uh, feel free to submit your own to us at any time in the chat window below. Uh, before we get going with today's presentation, though, uh, here's an overview of what we, what we do at Novench. So the Novich webinar series is brought to you by Novich.com. As one of the largest online design software stores, we offer a huge assortment of software solutions that cater to virtually every designer's need. Uh, to check out Monkspeed Pro Suite and to explore our entire catalog, you are welcome to call and speak with our sales specialist, Bob Thayer. You can reach him by his email address, bob at novich.com. Uh, to get a glimpse of who is, who is changing the world of design one step at a time, please visit Novich's very own blog. Uh, every week, our interviews shine a light on those innovators whose work break out from the norm. For more details, head on over to blog.novich.com. And I do want to mention that, um, based on past experience, uh, there is quite a number of jewelry designers out there who use McNeil's Rhinoceros. Uh, I'd like to invite you to visit rhinojungle.com. Uh, Novage's online community for Rhino users, designers, and professionals. Uh, join us as we share and discuss the latest Rhino news, video tips, and upcoming events. Uh, for more information, head on over to Rhino Jungle today. Uh, coming up next week, get ready to enhance project collaboration and make Bluebeam Review 11 Extreme your studio. Uh, see how Review's integrated cloud solution can host uh, virtual meetings to enable remote project partners from across the globe to collaborate online in real time. Uh, watch us demonstrate how project teams can collaborate on the fly by studio s sessions where multiple users can redline a single copy of the same PDF together in real time or separately on their own time from a desktop. So if you want to learn more about this, uh, head on over to novich.com slash webinar slash 94 uh, to register for this upcoming webinar. I do want to mention that if you have to leave at any time, like I said earlier, uh, the video is being recorded and will be shared on our channels at vimeo.com slash noveg, youtube.com slash noveg. So head on over there. With that said, uh, Brian, are you ready for this, today's presentation? Uh, yes, I am today, Kevin. Cool. Awesome. Uh, I'll switch over and make you the presenter right about now. So there we go. All right. Enjoy, guys. Submit your questions. Okay. Perfect. Um, in just a brief moment, you'll be able to see my screen. So here's a few examples of some jewelries that we've done. Um, again, there might be a slight lag delay um, based on the pictures being viewed, but you can just bear with me. We'll kind of show you some different previews of different variations of different gems along with diamonds. Uh, today, we're going to be covering um, two different types of um, turnaround tables. One's going to have a white background, and the other one's going to have a black background. And I'm going to be showing you how to do this all in one scene. So this way you don't have to save your project and then open up a new and then continue moving forward. So it's more of a streamlined setting. Um, in a brief moment, I'll be showing you an example of two of those turntables that we will be generating. Here's another sample. Okay. And the nice thing about our software is also the cost if you can get on the actual ground. And you can see how the lighting is being dispersed once it's hitting the diamond. Right. Now, here's one of the turntables we'll be generating today. Here's with the back background. And it's going to be more on a simple end, just doing a 360 turnaround. 
And the second one we'll be doing today as well is with the white background, but this time with two rings. Okay. Moving forward, um, we are going to be using Bunk Speed Pro to demonstrate today. Uh, for this set, um, session, we're going to be running in GPU. And for this computer setup, we're running off of four graphics cards. So it's a little bit more on a higher end, but it gives you a better experience um, interacting in our accurate mode. Moving forward, we're going to go ahead and select new project, beginning from the very beginning, and we're going to import our models. Now, as far as models, we support several different CAD applications um, for jewelers, um, especially for Rhino, Maya, 3D Studio Max, um, Pro Engineer, JewelCAD, several different formats. Uh, for today, we're going to be importing just the basic OBJ file. So our first option we're going to select is File Import. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and navigate to our current location where OBJ resides. All right, let me go ahead and get a different path. All right, so we're going to go ahead and bring in our OBJ. Now, the first thing that's going to appear on your screen is our import settings. To briefly go over these settings, um, one of the main things that you can do is you can change the part groupings when your object imports into our software. Now, by default, we like to set it by automatic, but if you wish, you can select the drop-down menu, and you can change your option to any other settings you wish to use. Um, most cases, users like using layers and materials. Again, I personally like using automatic because we already distinguished the best capability of how to bring in your model straight into our software. For this demonstration, we will select automatic. Now, at the bottom, we have our CAD units. For this um, model we're bringing in, I'm going to leave it in centimeters, but if you wish, depending on how your model was created in your CAD software, you can choose and select the proper CAD unit that you used. And the nice thing about this is that it will retain that setting every time in the future. So for example, by selecting centimeters today, and I'm importing an OBJ format, any time in the future when I import an OBJ, the CAD units will always remain as centimeters unless I change that setting. Moving forward, we're going to go ahead and click OK. At the top right corner, it gives you a little indication of what's occurring. Our model is now importing. Now, in the beginning of my process and workflow, I like working in preview. Preview is a nice way of navigating quickly in your scene, adjusting your cameras, getting your materials. And then at the end, I like switching to accurate to start dialing in my, my lighting aspect of it. Now for this model here, if you notice one thing, our ring is underneath the ground plane. And it's not centered in our environment globe lighting that we have here. Now one thing I like to do is I like to go over to my objects tab. And you can see a tree structure here giving you the different parts that are available. Now you can see how these are the diamonds, and here's the actual ring band itself. Now this can be renamed if you wish, or you can just leave it in the default naming convention that was brought in. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to select the root of our model. On the right, it's going to provide us our parameters. I'm going to select center to bring it to the center of our environment, and I'm going to select snap to ground. Now we have, we have the ability to actually manipulate a little bit better um, based on our lighting aspect of it. So with this first one here that we're going to be doing today, um, we're going to start with a black background. So I'm going to go ahead and just rotate our model by 90 degrees. Again, we're going to go ahead and snap that to ground and center it into the middle of our environment. I am now going to jump over to our library tab where we have all of our materials and environment sources available to you. I'm going to select my gem along with grabbing my first material which is going to be our diamond material. The next one I'm going to move forward to is our precious metals. And for this example we can just do, let's say, uh, just platinum. Go ahead and release, and now we have our two materials that we're mainly going to be using throughout this um, webinar. 
now we can turn on our accurate to kind of get more of an idea of how our lighting calculations is looking. Now, for this one, we're going to use a different environment. This one, we're kind of getting some hard lights and some hard black tones. So I'm going to change my material drop-down menu. I'm going to switch over to environments. Okay, I'm going to slow down a little bit so this way we can catch up together. Now we'll be able to preview our environments. Um, now we show everything in thumbnails. For this demonstration for black and um, environment, we're going to go ahead and use, let's see which one will work best for it. Let's go ahead and go down. We're going to use Studio 12B. We're going to drag that right into our viewport. Alright, so now we're getting more of a moodier type feel for our lighting. The next thing I'm going to do is come over to our scenes, select the environment that we just applied, and now I'm going to go ahead and take away our background. I don't want to see the environment. I want to go ahead and change the background color. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to deselect Show Environment Image, and then I'm going to come over to my background color and change the color just to black. Now we have a full black background. Now if I want to take it a step further and I want to add, let's say, ground reflections, maybe some ground glossiness, well, in our environment parameters, we have that available to you as well. I'm just going to go ahead and start off with low values, such as 0.25 for a reflection. And now we have a nice little reflection here on the ground. Now I'm going to add in a little bit of glossiness, not too much, maybe a 0 0.05 value, just to make it a little faint. And we're going to go ahead and just reposition our camera so we can get a better camera angle. All right, now as far as the ring goes, if we want to kind of rotate the environment so we can get different highlights, for example, this main highlight that we have here kind of blown out, let's say we want it to be in the center, um, backside of our ring. Well, I'm going to go ahead and begin selecting our rotation, and I'm going to begin rotating that environment. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it around, and let's go ahead and put it right in the middle. And as we kind of let that res up, we can kind of see the quality of our diamonds as well as the metal. Now pushing a little bit forward, if we want to begin fine-tuning these materials, we can now jump into our Material tab. Now, keep in mind, the nice thing about our Material tab, we're only showing you the active materials that are currently being used in our scene. Our library shows you all of our content, all of our materials that are currently available to you. So we try to mainly categorize everything and kind of keep your projects very simplistic and very clean. Now, coming into our Materials tab, we're going to go ahead and select our diamond, and now we have our diamond parameters. Now, the first option we have here is our color value. Now, let's see what color do we want in our diamond. Well, for this gem, um, this diamond itself, we're just using white. Let's say we want to add in a little bit of a blue tint. Well, I'm going to select my color. Now, we're going to have our color palette here. I'm going to go ahead and change the hue and get more into kind of the blue tint values. So let's go ahead and bring that down just a little bit. 212, that's fine. And now I'm going to increase the saturation. Now for this example, I'm going to go ahead and go drastic. And I'm going to put this more into the darker blue color tone. Now, now that we have our color set to blue, we're noticing that we're not really getting much of a blue color in there. Let's say we wanted to change this to uh, an actual gem, and we want it to be a blue gem, and it still looks like a diamond. Well, that's because of your thickness. Now, we measure our thickness by millimeters, and if you notice, this is at 26,673 millimeters, which is extremely high. Um, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and lower it. We're going to bring this down tremendously. We're just going to type in a whole value and I recommend starting off at a value of 10. Now we're starting to see that color. Again, we went extremely drastic because we're pretty um, 
close in the dark tones of blue. So now you can see that pigment in blue. Well, if we want to take away that and just get more of a hint, now we can begin dropping the saturation value. And now we're see, noticing that the blue is starting to go away and we're getting more back to a diamond feel with a, more of a blue tint aspect. Well, let's continue decreasing the saturation. Let's drop this to, let's say, a 3. Now we're getting our diamond with just a hint of a blue tone. Okay, moving forward, um, roughness, you probably won't want to do roughness when it comes to just standard diamonds because what you're doing is you're taking away um, the lighting aspect of it. For example, let me go drastic so I can show you what happens. If I go up to 75, that took away our diamond completely. So I recommend remaining down to a zero value. If you want to add in a little bit of roughness, that's more up to you, but that can be done. You can set it to a one value, and that would kind of just take away some of that reflectivity of your diamond itself. Kind of make it more of a dull aspect of it, if you ask me. Um, but I recommend sticking to zero when working with diamonds, so this way there is no roughness. Now, the add number, the easiest way to explain this setting, I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer on our diamond here. And this is the way I kind of see it. <clears throat> If you notice here, let me go ahead and take this back to full white. I'm going to let this render up just a little bit. We're probably going to be able to see it a little bit better in these smaller diamonds, but if you notice this shape of the diamond, we're getting more of a, high, um, more of a, a saturated blue tone that's kind of breaking up in the diamond itself. Well, the easiest way to explain the ab number, when you increase the value of it, it's going to take away some of those highlights, those color tone highlights. The, um, in other words, it's going to be pretty much, if you notice here, highlight it, it decreases the inter internal dispersion of the actual light itself. Now, to jump back to it, if I set this down to, let's say, a 20 value, we're going to get some more of those flare lighting in the actual diamond. Now we're noticing some more flare lights beginning to appear all throughout the diamond itself. The lower values you go, the more you're going to have. The higher value you go, again back to 90, it's going to take away that flare of light that you're seeing in the actual diamond. So you notice now we're not getting as much, but if you want to get more sparkle, so to say, Lower that down to probably a 20 value. I'll go ahead and let this res up. And now we're getting some more kind of a flare of lights kind of happening in your actual diamond. Of course, if you want to turn that off, you would just set that to a zero value. And now it just looks more like a black and white type diamond. It took away any type of color pigment in the actual diamond. Now, for this demonstration, we're going to go ahead and set this to a 20 value. This so we can get a little bit of flares happening, or quite a bit of them. This looks really nice, too, when you're actually doing the turntable, because when it's rotating, you're actually going to see the light flicker um, in the actual diamond. All right. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out so I can get more of a perspective view. Now that we have our diamond dialed in, let's go ahead and jump to our metal. Um, in this case, we're using a platinum metal. It's very straightforward. Um, the roughness is set to zero, so we're getting pure reflectivity on the actual metal itself. If you want to take away some of the reflectivity of it, all we need to do is increase the roughness. So for this example, let's set this to 30. And if you notice in the back, end of the ring, now you can see how that completely took away the reflectivity of it. And that's just at a 30 value. Well, we can then tone that down to, let's say, a 3 value, and now it's going to kind of take away some of that reflectivity, just the hint. Nothing too drastic. Okay, for this example, we're going to set that back down to 0. Perfect. And we're going to go ahead and just remain with the way our materials are now. 
Now, another good thing is, um, once you have your material dialed in and you want to start using this for future projects, we can then right-click on that material and we can select to either save to file or we can save it to our main library. And then from there, we can begin using these materials over and over and over again for all of our future projects. All right. Moving forward, um, before we create a rotation animation, let's go ahead and get our white background ring set up. I'm going to switch off um, accurate and switch back to preview. So this way we can navigate quickly and we can get our scene all set up and ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and move back to our objects tab here that we have here. I'm going to select our ring. I'm going to copy it by just either right clicking and selecting copy or control C and I'm going to go ahead and control V it. So now we have two copies of our actual ring. Now with our second one selected, I'm going to turn on our, our manipulation tool. Okay. If you notice, our pivot location is located um, kind of more on the top of our ring, kind of higher up in space. Well, if we want to center that in our properties, we can select pivot center to model. Now, when I rotate it, it's going to rotate from that access point. So let's go ahead and rotate this up. I'm going to use my viewport to rotate it. Okay, and then I'm going to go and select snap to ground just to bring it right up. And just for fun, we're going to go ahead and select our model, and we're going to just bring it down a little bit just so you can get a little bit of a different type of look. Now we have our two rings and we're ready to push forward on switching out our different lights, our different environments, um, our different background colors, and so forth. Now to do that, we have what's called our configuration tools. With this one here, I'm going to go ahead and create two different configurations. I'm going to name the first one white background. All right. And now I'm going to go ahead and change my light source. So I'm going to go into my Libraries tab. We're going to go into our Environments. I'll let that catch up for a brief moment. And we're going to go ahead and grab something different. Let's go ahead and get another studio type lighting. Uh, let's see here. Let's do Photo Studio. That would work perfect. We're going to just drag that right in. Let's turn on accurate so we can kind of get a better idea of what's happening here. All right, we're going to go to scenes. Now we have our two different environments. One is going to be for a black environment. And again, if we want to just keep the scene naming convention, we can call this one black um, studio. That's fine. And then for our other environment, let's name this white studio. I'm going to go ahead and deselect show environment image and I'm going to change our background color to white. Again, remember we are in our white background configuration so any changes that we're currently making will remain in that configuration. Pushing a little bit forward, if we want to rotate our environment, we can begin rotating it just slightly to kind of get some different angles, different highlights on the actual metal. And of course, if you want to add in some ground reflection, we can try maybe a 0.5 this time. And glossiness, I always like using a 0 0.05 value, but you could always change that at any given time. All right. Now, we have our white environment set. I'm going to go ahead and lock this configuration. So this way we can't make any more changes and it's going to stay the way it is. Not only that, I'm going to rename this camera view that I have and I'm going to name this just um, white camera. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this camera and I'm going to name the new one 
black camera. So we have the same naming convention. And if you give this file to anybody else, they'll already understand what's happening with your project. I'm going to change my configuration to configuration 1. We're going to rename that one. Same naming convention. We're going to call this black background. Okay, let me go ahead and fix that. Okay, so now we have our black background, and again, I'm going to switch back to our white. Now we have two variations. Now, another cool thing about configurations is that you can also hide different, um, different objects, uh, change the lighting, maybe change the cameras. For our white one, we're going to go ahead and leave it as is, actually. And for our black background, I'm going to go ahead and select one of our rings. And I'm going to go ahead and hide that ring there. We're going to switch to our black camera, so only changes will be done with that one. And now we're going to go ahead and get this into a perfect view. Okay, we'll go ahead and let that res up. And excellent. Now we have, again, two different configurations. Let me lock that. We have our white background with a different camera view. And now we also have our black background with another different camera view all in the same project. And when in the end, we can go ahead and render out all of these backgrounds all at once. Excellent. Now, I'm going to show you another trick. With this particular um, image that we have here, let's say we want to increase kind of the saturation values. We want to bring out more of the darker tones of our ring. Basically, we want to make the image pop. We even want to add more of a, a mood to it, kind of a warm mood or more of a cool mood. Well, what we actually have for you available in your camera's options is called post-processing. Now, the nice thing about post-processing is that it's only specific to that camera angle only, so, which means that you can have multiple cameras with different settings. Now, for this one in particular, we're going to go ahead and turn on post-processing. And now we're going to begin adjusting some of the attributes. The one I like adjusting is your darken. That's going to kind of bring up more of the darker tones of your image. And the value I personally like to use is starting off with a 0.15 value. Okay, that's just going to snap in the image a little bit more, kind of darkening it bringing out more of the diamond um, rather than just the band itself. The next option is our line tones. This is going to kind of bring out some of those highlights, those white lights that we have in our scene itself. So I'm going to set this one to, let's say, a 1.25 value. And I recommend working from there, trying to see which um, option will work best for you. Now, line mostly works best with white backgrounds because it just brings out more of the whiter tones. Um, but in this scene here, we're using a black background. Um, saturation values, if you had different color bands, like a, um, maybe a rose gold, it would bring out that rose gold tint a little bit more. Us introducing saturation now is just going to bring out some of those highlights in the diamond itself. So let's increase this to a 1.25 value. Okay, and then also we can now increase the exposure of our camera, just brightening up our scene just a little bit more, just so helping it illuminate. Now, to show you the difference, if I deselect Enable Post Processing, this is what our um, image looked like before. And just to help it out, pop it out just a little bit more, I'm going to re-enable the settings that we set for post-processing. 
and now you can see how it kind of fine-tuned it and just kind of enriching the life of the actual ring itself. Now let's do the same thing for the white background. Um, the reason why I want to go there is because we can kind of get a little bit more out of post-processing. Go ahead and lock that so we keep those settings. I'm going to switch back to our white background that we created for our configuration. All right, we're going to go ahead and enable post-processing. We're going to use the same values that we used in the last camera. I'm going to go ahead and put our darken tone to 0.15, my line tone 1.25, just to bring out a little bit more. And let's just go ahead and just increase the saturation just to a 1.2. All right, now the next thing I want to show you is our color filter. Again, this is changing the mood of our ring, whether we want it to be more in a, a warm feel or more of a cool feel. I'm going to select my color. It's our standard color box that we have here, and I'm going to change my hue more into, let's say, kind of like the orange tone. Oh, it's getting more into the green. There we go. And now I'm going to increase the saturation, but once again, to show you an example, I'm going to go drastic. I'm going to go pretty deep into it. So you can see how it gives it a yellow tint all throughout the entire image. Now that you can see the effect of it, I'm going to go ahead and drop this down to, let's say, a 3. And if we need to see a little bit better example, let me go ahead and go to a 10 value. That might be way too drastic. It's now changing the mood of the actual um, image itself. Now we have more of a warm tone. And of course, I can always save that in my color splash and begin using that in future projects. Now for my next color splash, I want to now use more of a cool feel. So now I'm going to go into my blue tint. I'll let that update on your screen. And now you're going to notice the ring has more of a cool blue tint to it. And of course, I can save that in my color splash and now I can switch between them. More of a warm feel. Okay. And now more of a cool feel. So you can see now how post-processing can be very effective. Now, if you're going to be using this for, let's say, your website, and you need to show off several different rings and different configurations and types. The, um, the color filter works great with giving a mood for your ring. However, it's also changing the background, giving it a blue tint. So if your website is pure white, you're going to notice a difference. Let's say you still want to keep the same blue mood for the actual ring, but you want the, the background to be pure white. What I recommend doing is, in your renders options, change your image format to TIFF and tell it to include an alpha. That will allow the background to be transparent and then now you can filter in, let's say, a pure white background and still keep your ring with the blue, um, with the cool feel aspect of it. So again, change your format image to a TIFF and tell it to include alpha. So this way it makes the background transparent and now you can bring in a white backplate and you can go ahead and start using that on your website to distribute and show off all your different rings with a cool feel or a warm feel depending on your wants and needs. All right, now moving a little bit forward, we're going to go ahead and set up a rotation animation. Uh, for this one, let's go ahead and since we're on white background, let's do this one here. Now, now that we have two separate different rings, um, the easiest thing I recommend is selecting both of your rings at once and we give you an option that says merge models. So this way when we move the actual geometry, it moves together as one. I'm going to select merge model. If you notice now in our tree, it now grouped it as one single source. Now if I hit the little tree structure here, now we can see the two different rings. It renamed it to root, but if you wish, you can rename that to ring one, and then we can name the other ring two. 
I can now select our main root of our model, right click on it, and we have an option that says Add Rotation Animation. At the bottom we have our timeline that's available to you. So when we hit play, let me go ahead and switch this to preview so we can see the playback. We can see now that we have a rotation at 360 degrees. That's one way of doing it. The other way is doing the same thing, merging your model, but in your renders options, we have a turntable option available for you. And it does the calculations. It makes it a lot more simplistic. Now for this one here, you can now tell it to, um, what's the end angle, 360 degrees, meaning it's going to rotate once around. If you need to increase that, you can jump it to 720 and so forth. You can choose your direction, clockwise or counterclockwise. And now we can change our render options and tell it, okay, what resolution do we need it at? Remember, our resolution is um, unlimited. There is no limitations. We can even begin choosing our quality and hit Start Turn Table Rendered. And now we'll get a final output of this turntable looking exactly how we had one earlier. Let me show you an example just like that. That pretty much covers um, majority of our webinar today. Um, again, our main focus today was just showing you how to import your model. Use your main library to grab your materials. Now in our materials, it was very basic. We only used two. Uh, we used a diamond and a platinum. After that, we changed our light source and we created two different environments, a white studio and a black studio. Once we had that set, we then created two different configurations, and this way you can toggle and switch between them. Again, this um, webinar will be recorded for you to use, and I hope it wasn't too technical, but I wanted to kind of give you a better overview on how to set up your scenes, and I'll put some rotation animations fairly quickly. Okay, um, now I guess we'll go ahead and move forward on to any questions that you have for us today. Okay. Uh, well, so the very first question that we had, uh, Angela kind of answered this uh, in the Q&A window. Uh, does, this is from Catherine, thank you, Catherine. Um, does Rhino work with punk speed? And I'm assuming that it does. Yes. Um, that's correct, Kevin. Um, it does work with our software. The beauty of Rhino is that we have a plugin that's available for you as well, meaning that there's a drop-down menu in Rhino that allows you to send your model directly from Rhino into Bump Speed, kind of make it more of a streamline. But yes, it does. Cool. Um, I also have another question. This is from Peter. Uh, continue to submit your questions as well as everybody else. Uh, if you have, if it's Bump Speed related, that's awesome. Uh, but Peter, Peter is curious as to what parameters can be different in the configurations. Sure. Um, anything you can imagine. Again, um, it could be different cameras. Um, it can be different types of materials. If you'd like to show you a quick example, let's say I want to show, um, I want to use the same environment you're using now, but I want to have a different color band itself. I can go ahead and create a new one. If you notice, when you create a new configuration, it brings back your other models as well. So I'm going to go ahead and hide that top one here. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into my um, library, Precious Metals. And let's go ahead and grab, let's say, a yellow bronze. This is just an example. And we can now name this one yellow. All right, now when I switch between my black background, we're going to get our standard, um, just our um, platinum. And now when we switch to yellow, now we have a different color tone, but still using the exact same background environment itself. Okay, so to answer your question, you can have several different of material types, different gems showing. So for example, if you wanted to change this diamond from a round diamond to a square diamond, you can do that. You can hide the round, bring in the square. You can set different lighting types. So for example, again, we're in this yellow configuration, and if you notice, the black studio is checked. 
when I switch it to a white background, the white studio has now has a green check mark and our background has now changed. So it works for lighting, materials, and camera changes. Cool. Um, well, I have a question. Uh, because you mentioned earlier that you're running, the hardware that you're running uh, Bunk Speed on has about four video cards, correct? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like realistically, um, what would happen, let's say someone, a jewelry designer has only two video cards, uh, what kind of performance, um, uh, stability issues, uh, you know, uh, should we expect? Um, it's just more in speed. The quality is going to be identical. Uh, for example, for for this particular image we're rendering, let's say it takes about maybe a minute and 30 seconds to output um, a single image at, let's say, a 2000 by 2000 resolution. Uh, for a two GPU graphics card, it'll probably jump up to about, mm, I would say, roughly three minutes to four minutes. So you can see the difference in time, going from a minute and a half to about close to maybe three and a half minutes, somewhere around that ballpark. Cool. Um, and I also want to ask because I mean, you guys do. This is a presentation about Bunksby. Where else could um, users and potential users uh, go to find out more information about you know, like how to do a certain technique, how to um, interact with a certain feature a lot better than they did before? Definitely. Now on our website, we have several different tutorials, um, including different webinars that we've hosted in the past that you can actually view um, or even download the, um, the actual videos and play back, pause it, anything you need to do. Uh, those are available. Fairly soon we'll be generating some new content on there, uh, more focused on the new features that we have available. So you'll be getting to see those tutorials um, begin to grow. Again, you can access this on our Bunksby website. All it requires is for you to register and log into our website, which is 100% free. And if you have our software already, um, most likely you already have that account set up. Okay. Very cool. I think that pretty much sums up the Q&A session. Um, Brian, I think I'll switch back to me as a presenter. And then uh, ooh, I think we have another question. Uh, what is the different configuration to model set? OK, model set <laughs> is actually uh, it's really nice. Um, I like model sets, but I also like configurations. Difference between the two, a model set will basically think of it as it being a project within a project. What I mean by that is, with configurations, you're always seeing the same models in your, in your actual object tree that we have here. Now, if I hit the plus sign of our model set, it took away all of our geometry. However, it kept the materials that were used the different scenes that were used, and the cameras. So think of it as being a clean slate, a new project within a project. So what I can do now is I can come back to our first model set. I can copy just one ring, jump back to the new one that we just created, and I can paste in that geometry piece. Let me go ahead and paste that and set this back to preview. Maybe I didn't hit copy. Let's do it one more time. Right click, copy, and jump into another model set. And now I can show this one off in different materials. Let's just use this yellow band. Oh, our configuration is locked. Let me unlock that. Go to our base. OK, so I'll go ahead and apply a material. There we go. So now our model set 2 will have a different material and different objects. So in other words, let's say you have five different ring types, five different SKUs, and you want to use one master project for those five SKUs. Well, you can create a single model set for each individual SKU. So it's sharing the same materials, same lighting source, but by switching into these different model sets, we'll then just change the skew of your model, keeping it extremely clean rather than using configurations. I hope that answered your question. But cool. that's the general idea. Cool. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, once again, if you guys have any other questions, uh, Brian is on the forums at bunksby.com. So uh, I will 
give you guys an address and just a brief snippet but um, um, afterwards but uh, I think I'll switch back to me right about now let's see uh, cool. all right All right, yeah, I want to say thank you to everybody for joining, for attending our webinar today. Uh, it's been awesome. Uh, Brian, thank you for the presentation. Thank you, Angela, for answering questions in the background. Uh, like I said, uh, if you guys are interested, uh, the webinar is being recorded live, so you guys can rewatch this at our channels at youtube.com and boneal.com slash novage as well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, um, the Novage webinar series is brought to you by Novage.com. Uh, as one of the largest online design software stores, we offer a huge assortment of software solutions that cater to virtually every designer's need. If you guys want to check out our bunch, uh, our, I'm sorry, excuse me, Bunk Speed Pro Suite, and to explore our entire Bunk Speed catalog, uh, you are welcome to call and speak with our sales specialist Bob there. Uh, you can reach him by his email address, Bob at Novage.com. And if you want to take your skills further, um, you guys are more than welcome to um, check out BunkSpeed.com. Uh, they have a forum, they have a gallery, and a bunch of plugins as well, including Rhino, because uh, I know a lot of jewelry designers are uh, using Rhino uh, for their modeling needs, for the design needs as well. So yeah, check it out, BunkSpeed.com. Sure. Kevin, if I get one last thing, um, we'll also like to thank um, mm -hmm. Abdullah Mazum for allowing us to use his jewelry. Um, that's what we're just um, showing you today as well. So again, thank you, Abdullah Mazum, for allowing us to use your, your CAD file for this presentation. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, if you guys want to get a glimpse at who is changing the world of design one step at a time, please visit Novage's very own blog. Um, our interviews shine a light on those innovators whose work break out from the norm. So if you guys want more information, head on over there. And um, there are quite a number of jewelry designers out there who use McNeil's Rhinoceros. Um, I'd like to invite all of you guys to visit Um This is a place, an online community uh, for Rhino users, designers, professionals. Um, join us as we share and discuss the latest Rhino news, video tips, and events. Uh, for more information, head on over there. Um, coming up next week, uh, we'll be having a webinar with uh, Lillian, who will be talking about and demonstrating Bluebeam Studio's uh, real-time collaboration tools. So if you guys want to check that out, head on over to novich.com slash webinar slash 94. Yep, and uh, our recording is continuing to be recorded. <laughs> so yeah, if you guys want to check it out, the video should be up by the end of today and um, yeah I'll provide links in the webinar follow-up afterwards uh, but yeah thank you for joining us today thank you Brian thank you Angela thank you the whole entire Punk Speed team uh, attendees um, you guys can find us on Facebook as well as on Google Plus as well uh, follow us on Twitter so alright in that case have a good one guys thank you thank you so much take care